Hello guys, so welcome to this side. Back again with new tutorial video. In this video, we are going to learn about the wave socket through an interesting wizard in Flutter that is about the stream builder. So let's start the video. So let's know what is wave socket. So in case you don't know what is wave socket, uh, I will tell you in shortly. Just like if you see in the API integration, the client make a API call to the server and the data process in the server and after that the uh, server send the data to the client so at a one point of time one way communication is happening just like when the api call is happening from the client to the server at the same point of time the data is not coming from the server to the client okay so at that point of time a one way communication is happening but in web sockets what is happening there is a constant communication between the client and the server so that does not work like at the api call just like when the client call a api then the data will be come from the server so that's not work in the web socket so web socket what's happening due to that constant connection so this is called the bipolar connection when the data is getting available in the server the data already get faced in the client side and client also send the data at the same point of uh, at the same time to the server as well for any request okay so just like it is the upgraded version uh, if you compare from the api call where the two ways of communication is happening at the same point of time okay so that's the specialty of, of the web sockets we will learn about the web sockets later uh, later on when we do any project and in this video we will see that a uh, web socket shortly here okay so and uh, let's talk about that another interesting widget about the stream builder so stream builder actually uh, accept the continuous stream of data just like uh, if you consider water stream so that means the continuous flow of the water so in the stream builder in case of flutter actually it takes the continuous stream of data and that continuous stream of data is available from the web socket specially okay so that's why stream builder can sync up with the web sockets very easily so that's why stream builder come into the picture so in the last video we see about the future builder uh, that accept a future so in the stream builder just like the future builder it not accept a future but a stream because it uh, accept the stream of the data okay so we can add that web socket through the stream in the stream builder as well so let's see in the code how we can do that so uh, in the last video we see about the future builder also that the data is getting fetched from that fetch post data with that future builder now we don't need any of that because in this video we are not doing any api call we are going to work with the web socket so i just uh, commented out all of the things under that column because we have to make another widget for that so i not the started the project yet so i just uh, run the project here so that i can tell you in live as well okay so here i run our favorite comment to run the project that is flutter done okay so let's wait to run the project so guys our project is started and as we commented all of the things there is nothing is showing here our agenda is we will make the text field at here in the top of the column and there is a button just below of the text field so what uh, so what happened whenever we will click on that button whatever is written in the text field will be sent to the web socket server and we are using a special web socket uh, server so what happened when we send the data to the web socket server that that data will be uh, getting fetched by default uh, in the app okay so let's see wh how can we do that okay so for that we have to make a text field here so here i write and i make the method here at the bottom of it and here i write a return container of it and having the width that will cover the whole screen width as well and uh, having a padding so that it will be looking good so i write here padding constant uh, edge insets dot symmetric and here will be the horizontal of 10 and vertical of 5 so that's a decent padding and then we have to make a text field here we have to make a controller because as i said when you click on that button that text field data will be sent to the websocket server so for making the controller what we have to do at the top of the screen we have to make uh, a text editing controller so here i write so what happened that will be a final and one more thing here uh, in the dispose method we have to dispose that as we seen one of the last one of the video of the series so controller dot dispose okay now what we have to do we have to come to the bottom of the screen and here what we have to do we have to define that controller as well and then we have to make a decoration and here we have to provide the level level is a type of widget so we have to write write 
uh, message okay so now we can make a hot reload here so let's see how it is look so here you can see that text field is showing here uh, now what we have to do we can make the text field at the top of the screen so instead of making it uh, at the center so here I just uh, comment the line because by default that item will be so at main axis alignment does start so the message section will is showing here and one more thing as this is very much close to the status bar i just make a significant pace here so size box having a height of 20 so size bar having a height of 20 so that it will be looking good if we make a hot reload that will be decent showing here okay now what we have to do after that we don't have to write any of the things because we are not doing any of the fancy uh, text field after that as i said before i have to make a button that button will be responsible for the sending data to the web socket server we have to write common button and here what we have to write send data okay so in case you don't know what is the common button you can write the code from here with pause the video so i assume you copied the code from here now what we have to do in that send data we have done what we have to do uh, we have to uh, make the data send data to socket server okay now we have to make the method at the bottom of that class and here we have to first check before sending the data to the web socket if the uh, data in that text field is empty or not because if there is empty there is no meaning of sending the data to the web socket server if the data if we come at the line number 280 that means the data is present in that text field and we have to send data to the socket server so how can we do that for that we have to install a package that package name is web socket channel so we have to go to the installing part and here from that installing part we have to copy the package name and what we have to do we have to first terminate the project before terminate the project as we make a button here we make a hot reload so that i can show you that so we make that uh, button so when that button will be clicked the data will be sent to the web socket server now we have to uh, uh, close the project as well because we want to install a package that is necessary to change in the root of the project so what we have to do we have to come to the prospect.aml and in the prospect.aml uh, after that http under that dependencies i just paste it here and here if i write flutter pub get the package will be getting installed so as our package is getting installed now what we have to do we have can close the prospect.yml and what we have to do we can run the project again so that we can enjoy the web socket with the stream builder so guys as you can see the project is started now what we have to do we have to come at the top of the project so in that file so we have to import our package that we just installed that is web socket channel dot dot so we imported that package websocket channel dot dot here okay now what we have to do we have to come back to the bottom of that but before going to the bottom we have to just uh, here define the channel of that websocket just like in case of the api there is a particular api url is present so in case of the websocket that the url is not present that is about the uh, websocket channel name is present so how can we define the channel name we have to write here final uh, and give the parameter name as channel now we have to write uh, web socket channel and here we have to write connect and dash will be accept a uri not the url so we have to write uri dot parse and here the normal http or https uh, api uh, url will be not present that will be present in that form okay so that's our web socket channel so in case of the web socket that will be not started from the http or https that will be started from ws or ws just like you can compare http with ws only and https with wss only okay so in that way you can define a web socket channel here and we want to uh, send that the data that whatever will be written in the text field from that button uh, from that button we send the data to that web socket server and web socket server will be written that data we will see it later so what we can do that now what we have to do we have to come at the bottom of the screen and here in that bottom of the screen when the text field is not empty at the line number 284 we have to send data to that web socket server so we have to write channel dot sync dot add and here the text that we want to send to the web socket server so that sync method will be called from the client side to send the data from the server as well okay that the web socket server 
okay so that's why you can send the data to the web surface server but as i said that web surface server will be return the data that whatever we will be sent to the web surface server so how can we show that return data for that we have to use the stream builder along with that web socket channel now what we have to do we have to come here at the uh, column where we make all of that uh, text field and button and after that we can make a significant place after that button and here what we have to do we have to make a section where that data will become uh, so sent data okay now just make the method at the bottom of the screen so that it will be looking good now what we have to do we have to make here a particular uh, container having particular width and height And here I write height of media query dot of context dot size dot height minus let's say 150. Okay. Now what we have to do, we have to we can give a decent padding from here. So it instead dot symmetry having the horizontal padding of 10 and having the vertical padding of 3 that will be decent. And now as I said that we have to take the data through the stream builder with the web socket stream. So what we have to do, we have to write the fantastic widget name that is stream builder. And here in the stream builder, before writing any builder, we have to first provide the stream here. Okay. Now in the stream uh, parameter, we have what we have to do, we have to write channel dot stream okay now as you can see that stream actually accept a stream of dynamic and that stream also return the stream of dynamic so that the parameter getting its uh, definite value of it then after that we have to write a builder of it and as you can see in that builder uh, there is build context and the async dynamic snapshot is present just like the future builder uh, builder parameter so here that build context is not going to use here but that will be going to use so i give that variable name as snapshot here we have to do one more thing in the dispose method we have to uh, dispose that channel as well okay so dot sync dot uh, close because when that the widget is uh, getting removed from that widget tree that the channel will, uh, uh, data stream will be getting closed okay what we should do when in the snap uh, snapshot we have to check in that way return uh, text field at the center of the screen obviously so that it will be looking good and here has, we have to show our text when we have to show the text if the snapshot having a data so if i write snapshot dot has data we have to show the data here so we have to write snapshot dot data if the data is not present in the snapshot we have to show a empty string and we have to give a decent style of it so that it will be looking good in the video itself so having the font size of i think 18 is the best now if we make a hot restart here now it is the by default text is coming from the stream as well now if i make here summer fun and if I click on that scene data that summer P is showing so here I write summer one okay and now the data is showing so we can do one more thing here instead of writing uh, showing data at the center of the screen we can make the data at the top of it so that it will be looking good and okay hello viewers and if we want to send the data the data is showing here okay so in that way you can send the data to the websocket server and have to, you can fetch the data from the websocket server so this is the simplest example of websocket with the stream builder in the future when we making any group chat or any kind of other project there uh, we will see a large extent of websocket in a very different form okay so websocket and stream builder having a very much good friendship in case of any of the project when there is the real data fetching is coming into the picture we will see that eventually in the incoming project of the series so stay tuned for that if you love this kind of video don't forget to uh, like comment share and don't forget to subscribe to this channel the next video of the series is coming very soon stay tuned for that have a nice day bye